In this video, let's use Unreal JS to actually do something. So I'm going to make a blueprint. Yes, I know this is a tutorial about Unreal JS, but I think Unreal JS is best used in conjunction with Blueprint. Many of you who have used Unreal before already know how to use Blueprint. And so in this video, I want to show you how to combine that knowledge of Blueprint with JavaScript. So I'm just making a very simple actor here with a cube, and I'm going to turn on simulate physics just so it's a little more interesting. Now, of course, I could I could drag this into the editor, and if I pressed play, then we would see the, uh, the cube pop up out of the floor that it was colliding with. But I'm actually not going to drag it in there on start. Let's delete it. What I'd like to do is spawn that cube from JavaScript. So you may notice that there's actually a JavaScript console over here. Now, what I would like to do is something like uh, new my cube, but it, it won't work quite that easily. Let me show you what happens. So when I press play and type G world, global world, uh, it does return an object. So I have a reference to the world. That's one component of what I would need in order to spawn something in this world. You could try typing my cube and you notice it did actually create my cube C well, that mycube c is actually a function, and it turns out to be a constructor function. So I can say mycube underscore c, and I need to pass in g world. That's the reference to the world that I want to spawn the cube in. And it should spawn, notice I'm not passing in a location. It's going to default to 0, 0, 0, which happens to be about right here. So when I run that new mycube c in g world, I get a new mycube right there at 0, 0, 0. So that's pretty cool. But there is a gotcha here. I want to show you what happens if um, if I try to put that into my onStart.js. So watch this. So remember, onStart.js is the JavaScript components script source file, which I happen to have open right here. And I, I'm going to do just the same thing. I'm going to say new mycube c in gworld. So now that same thing that I ran in the console should run on start of the game. So I will press play and all seems normal. Check it out. Look, there's a cube right there. Problems arise as they often do when you try to package the project. So let me package the project into the, into the same folder that I packaged it in before. Now, when I run that, you would expect to see a cube because it's going to try to run the same onStart.js script, but alas, there's no cube. Something broke. We can check the logs just to see what the error is. Let's search for my cube. And it says error, reference error, my cube C is not defined. So my cube C is defined in the editor, but then when you build the project, it's not defined. And this can be kind of frustrating where your JavaScript works in one place, but then doesn't work after you build your game. Now, obviously, this is not what you want if you want JavaScript to be a tool for extending your game after it's already been built. So let me show you two ways to fix this problem. One of them is not the right way, but I want to illustrate both ways because this entire concept tells you something about how Unreal works. The reason that it can't find that class is that this cube actually stops existing when you build the project. There is no my cube in the built project because Unreal is actually trying to help you out. It looks at everything in the level and everything referenced by things in the level, and it doesn't find my cube, so it doesn't cook that into your built project. So here's one way to fix it, not the way I'd recommend, but you could just you could stick a cube in here. It, now there's a cube, a random cube somewhere in the level. We can even hide it, so no one no one sees it, no one knows that there's a cube in there, because we're really just doing it to trick Unreal into building the cube into the level. Again, don't do it this way. I just want to illustrate that this is what's going on. So I'll put that hidden cube right there and I will build the project again. Okay, it's rebuilt and I'm going to launch it now and we should see our cube spawn because that hidden cube is there. So there's our cube and look, there's the hidden cube falling away to oblivion. So that hidden cube allowed us to spawn this cube from JavaScript. But we, we really don't want to be using that technique where we put hidden actors into a level just so that the class is there inside of JavaScript to spawn new ones. The more common way to deal with this problem is not to have this hidden cube, so I will delete that. I'm going to go to my JavaScript component, and there's this line here called class assets. I'm going to add a new class asset, 
and I'm going to call it my cube. And I'm going to select the my cube blueprint from the search box. So now this effectively does the same thing. Floor is in the level. Floor has a JavaScript component on it, and the JavaScript component references my cube, which is right here. So because of that chain, my cube will get cooked into the package build, and it should allow us to do the same thing, spawn a cube right here, but without having to have a hidden cube somewhere underneath the level. So let's try that. Let's actually just make sure that we didn't break it in the editor. Cool, there's our cube in the editor. We have no hidden cubes up our sleeve in the level, so let's build the project now. Okay, we've built it once again. Let's see if it works. I'm going to launch it, and we should see a cube spawn right when it starts, and no hidden cubes anywhere to be found. Now, of course, once you've gotten this far, you can feel free to let your JavaScript imagination run wild. Let's wrap it in a loop. I'll say let i equal zero, i is less than 100, i plus plus, and now we're going to create 100 cubes once it starts. Let's try that. So I'm editing the on start that is here in the editor, so that should work in the editor. There's 100 cubes in the editor. Now, of course, it will not work in the built project yet, because remember, those script directories get copied over when you build. So if I run my most recent build, I should just see one cube. There is one cube. But if I were to track down that content scripts on start file and do the same thing in there, I would get the same effect. So I'll make the same change over here. Actually, let's make it more interesting. Let's make a thousand of them. Let's do I++. And now, I have written new JavaScript code, and I need not even rebuild the project. All I have to do is rerun it. And it freezes a little bit because a uh, thousand cubes is a lot to spawn, but there they all are. It's a thousand cubes that just, just spawned right there. And I want to point out that you're able to make those changes to a built project, which means you can distribute your project to other people and they can make those mods themselves. They don't need Unreal installed, they just need your game that came out of Unreal and is set up to run JavaScript.